Before we left Elk Snack State Park, we wanted to head to the end of the peninsula and take a little hiking trail that went out to the Turkey Point Lighthouse. So much for being a major, I hit the panic button. <laughs> At least it wasn't me this time, because you always give me a hard time about like locking the car too loud. <laughs> this time it wasn't me. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> working on your posing already. Yeah. I moved the camera over to get a shot of the Chesapeake Bay, and just as I turned the camera off, a bald eagle flew right across these trees here. I couldn't believe the terrible timing, but I was hoping that maybe we'd be lucky enough for it to happen again. The trail to the Turkey Point Lighthouse starts at the very end of the peninsula. There's a parking area that leads to a very wide, flat trail. Pretty easy to get through. It's about a mile and a half, and there's even some benches so that you can rest along the way. About halfway down the trail, there's a hawk viewing area, and there's this big open meadow with lots of flowers, and there were just tons of butterflies. They're uh, milkweed pods, so it's really important for the monarch butterflies. Uh, you see them right there? Oh yeah, there's a monarch. Oh wow. Wow, there's a ton of them. Huh. Actually, I think those are swallowtails. Yeah. There's actually a crisis going on with the milkweed plant right now because of human activity and insects like these and herbicides that are used to kill plants that are seen as being unnecessary, there are not enough milkweeds in the U.S. for the monarch butterfly to continue its lifespan. So there is a movement to try to plant more milkweed plants to help the monarch butterfly to survive. like a wall of green. Almost looks like a topiary. Like it was sculpted to look like that. Mm. At the end of the trail, you come to the Turkey Point Lighthouse. This lighthouse is 35 feet high and it was built in 1833. The lighthouse is open to visitors on the weekends from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. But since we were there on a Monday, we didn't get to go up to the top of the lighthouse. Oh, look at the butterflies. It is a pretty good cliff. Yeah, it's legit. <laughs> you can see like erosion and yeah. some of it's crumbling. We were amazed at the number of butterflies and bees and birds and just all sorts of wildlife in this area. We saw deer and we even saw a couple other bald eagles. We just couldn't believe it. There were hawks flying around. And then finally, I was quick enough with my camera to catch one of the eagles. 
We definitely could have spent more time at Elk's Neck. There were other hiking trails that we wanted to explore, but we only had one night there and we had to go back and pack up the scamp. Yeah, at least it stopped raining though. Yeah. It was just a drizzle. They must get, get some crazy like runoff. Like, oh before. yeah, if it rains real hard. Went over to the uh, camp sink to wash the dishes and I found this praying mantis in the sink. He was stuck because it's like a deep metal sink. He couldn't get out. And then he climbed onto my dishes. So he's been hanging out with me while I do the dishes. It's pretty cool. The praying mantis is a fascinating creature. They have incredible agility and they are master predators. They can camouflage and stalk their prey and then attack with lightning speed. The females are also known for sometimes killing the males during the act of mating. But despite this fierce reputation, many people think that the praying mantis is a sign of good luck. We got the scamp packed up and then started to head out to our second park on our road trip which was another Maryland State Park. We were heading toward Greenbrier. I think we'll probably definitely go back to Elks Neck State Park at some point. We were just there for one night, mostly because of the location. I picked that for our first night just because it was an easy two hour drive, especially with uh, Patrick getting out of work. We only really wanted to go two hours, but um, my recommendation would be don't get there in the dark. Cause those roads were really sketchy at night trying to find the campground. It was pretty challenging. The campground is great. The spots were really nice, a little tricky to back into, but not too bad. And the bathrooms were awesome. The shower was hot and uh, super clean. So, neat park. I mean, we only got to do like a tiny little bit of the hiking trails to go out and check out the lighthouse. But then there were these other trails that went down the cliff that looked really, really neat that I would like to do uh, if we come back again. And uh, bringing the kayaks would be awesome too because some of the spots are close enough to the water that you could just throw your kayak in. So, next time. All right, now we're going to Greenbrier State Park. Oh, this is that bridge that I always remember driving over. Crosswind with a stamp. <laughs> ultimate goal for this leg of the trip was to check out Harper's Ferry. When I was doing the trip planning, I looked around Harper's Ferry for somewhere to camp, and there are campgrounds, but they are big family-oriented campgrounds with lots of events going on, and that's really just not our style. We want to be in nature when we're camping. So I found Greenbrier State Park, which is about a 35-minute drive outside of Harper's Ferry, this was much more our pace, so I'm glad we ended up staying here.